Yeah, get it on. Got to get on. No choice, but on a mandate. You get it on. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for telling a friend. We love that about you. Welcome back, comedian Sam Tripoli. Good to be back in the saddle. Good to see you, my friend. Chris McSpan is going to be doing some news over there. Oh, yeah. Sam's got live dates all over the place. And you can go to samtripoli.com for all the live dates. And then the podcast, the broken, I should say broken situation and conspiracy social club. A.K. Deep Waters, wherever you find finer podcasts. All right, uh, Sam, you're a working comedian. Yeah, you fly, you travel. I do, you bro. Crisscross the nation. Yeah, I have thoughts. People don't often agree with my thoughts, but I do. I, I like that. <laughs> and um, as far as I can tell, they're pretty bulletproof, but I still get a lot of pushback, which is. I just flew back from Hawaii. Yeah. Now, I flew to Hawaii first class on Hawaiian Airlines. Congrats. I know. It's a big deal. <laughs> uh, I've said it 35 times, but I'm, I'm going to say it again. And it should be marked on the ticket when you order a first class ticket. When you walk onto the airplane, do you turn left or do you turn right? If you turn left, you're in first class. If you turn right, you're not in first class. Even and, if even if the ticket says first class, right. you are not in first class. And I, I will I will spell this out with, with no hyperbole oh, and no saying. question marks. I see what you're saying. Left is the only real first class on an airplane. Right, that's you with a bigger seat in general pop. Yep. Now, let me tell you why. I, I finally discovered what the real reason is. I marked the twine. I had a flight out of out of Hawaii, and the the flight was uh, three oh five, right? But if you have a first class ticket, you get to board first. Yeah, yeah. Okay. What is the advantage of boarding first if you just sit there? Now, if you turn left, then you'll get champagne and you'll get a mai tai, you'll get whatever Hawaiian becomes something becomes a lounge. No, I get that. If you turn right. You just sit first yeah, yeah. at the front of the plane. Yeah. Then everybody with the rolly luggage bangs you in the knee, and you sit there for 45 minutes until the plane is completely loaded, but you just sit there. Yeah. There's no service because they can't do a service because the flow of salmon. I agree. Loser salmon. Yeah. <laughs> rotting loser salmon. I that's what you thought I am a loser me. salmon. Are going to the back of the plane. How would it be possible for the flight attendant to come up to you, get a drink order, go back to the galley when there's a never ending wave of humanity just walking down that aisle the other direction They're not so, running drinks no so, way. Yeah, i agree with so, you so whenever i travel with someone they go we got a first class ticket we can get we can get on right now and i go yeah but we're Why? just go we're gonna sit there and so for everyone else the flight from la is five hours but for us it's five hours and 45 minutes yeah i agree I, you know what i say thought experiment what if it was just a bus to yuma <laughs> so it was one, hey, did you pay an extra $500 for yeah, your bus ticket? Yeah, and you go, yeah. yeah, I did. Well, then you can go sit on the bus. Yeah, you get to see everybody come in. And then you go, but what's on the bus? Your ass yeah, is on yeah, the bus. Yeah, yeah. But then what happens? Well, then you sit there until everyone is done, and then you and then you can leave. But I'm like, isn't first class waiting for everyone to get loaded up, and then they call me? And then I sit down and I say, we can leave now. Mm -hmm. You get more time at the bar or the lounge. The only the reason airport. you want to be yes. early in the se in the regular class is so you can get space to put your luggage. That's the only reason to get on earlier. Yeah, but yes. if you're in first class, you're right. There's no reason to get on early. Unless you're turning left. If you're turning left, then you're in your own little lounge area. They throw the curtain, yeah. and then you have two stewardesses serving you drinks there while you go. sit there and talk about yeah. possible dinner menus. Yeah, I agree. Right. So if you turn right, don't get on early. I put a clock on it. Here's my new thing when I fly. I do this thing just to see how dumb my flight is. I times the amount of mass by the amount of dogs on the flight, mm. and if it equals double digits, you're not you're not flying a plane. You're riding a short bus. And That's it, right. It's all coming back. These like these mass. Masks are starting to come back. I was I did a show at the comedy store, and I'm like, yeah, they're going to try to bring back masks, but we're not going to let them, right? Sold out show. <laughs> Everybody just stared at me. Crickets. I go, 
We're not going to let them, right? We're going to... Quiet, bro. No, I know, because they've moved past evidence. It's yeah. now just a way of life. It's become a religion for them. And religion just defies logic. So there's no studies that say the mass work, but we're going to do it anyway because that's our religion. All right, I put a clock on it. I had a 305 flight out of Honolulu. I, my ass hit that seat at 2.30. At 2.30. At 2.30. At 4.29, I received my drink. Oh. 4.20. Oh, my God. Two goddamn hours. Oh, to be fair to Alaskan no. Airlines, I did get a box of water. <laughs> I got a box like for the- two hours. Okay. <laughs> All right. So let's do this math. Are you ready? Are you with me? I'm All ready. Right. It was it was two hours. I literally was staring at the, at my phone and timing the whole thing. <laughs> it was two because you sit there for the first forty minutes before you even push back, and then once you push back and you get in line, and then once you get get up in the air, you have to get to your cruising altitude, and then once you level out, then the drinks begin. Right? Okay. So it was two hours. No no hyperbole. First thing, but. But the ticket's an extra 500 So, worst bar in the world? Yeah. yeah. Worst bar in the world. What if there's a bar? Here's our business model. You pay $200 for a ticket, and you pay $700 for a ticket to get into our bar. But once you get in our bar, you, who paid 500 more, you sit your ass down, and we'll give you a drink in two hours. You can just <laughs> yeah, sit right at this bar with no sports center, by the way. You just sit here staring at swizzle sticks and tell that bartender's good and fucking ready to give you a drink two hours from after that's, you get in. That's Crazy. unbelievable. When you think of it that way, it sounds insane. Right now, do you have you ever tried asking for a drink before? Do they did they oh. deny you? Well, okay. Here's what's broken into to sections here. When your ass hits the seat, because you're first class, you get to get on first. Uh, then it's it's an unbroken, never ending ball of humanity heading the other way in the aisle. You asking for a drink at that point's an impossibility. Yeah. What what would you do? So you hit the ringer. How's the stewardess even going to get to you if she does and you ask for a drink? She's going to be like, I, I can't. I got to walk back against the salmon yeah. stream and do what? Like, no, no, no. There's no drinks at that beginning part. The next part, you're on an active jetway. It's very active. Mm. And there's no getting up or anything during that. And then during takeoff and the part where you get to, you know, whatever thousand feet and level off, there's no moving around. There's no drink until you level out. At, uh, they know what they're doing. Hour too. and 47 minutes yeah. later, you'll yeah. level out. Then you can order a drink. Then 10 minutes later, you'll I'm get really your drink. I'm really amazed they don't, if you buy that ticket, ask you what drink you want. Right. Where you're sitting, and then maybe it could be waiting for you as you sat. The tickets all need a designation L or R. If, you, if it's L, get there early and turn left. If it's R, wait it out. Let all the other donkeys get on, on the, get on the train, and then you, you can get on. But yep. here's the interesting thing about the human condition, if you think about it, right? I'm at a resort on the North Shore, right? The resort has an option, a club op- option. They have a club room. It's a beautiful resort. And if you want to pay an extra 150 bucks per person, you can get onto the club floor, right? Club floor's got drinks, you know, beer and wine, and uh, sandwiches and finger food and stuff like that. Right. But you sit around and you go, 150 bucks. Yeah, right. I, now, wait a minute. If we went out to lunch and we ordered a drink... It's like seventy bucks or something. You're itemizing. I, I don't know. Is it worth the hundred and fifty per man. person, or should we just go eat at the restaurant and then you get a you get a fifty dollar food voucher for breakfast or something? You start your weighing. That was a long deliberation. We declined. But the five hundred bucks for the first class flight, where you just sit in general pop and get nothing. Yeah. No brainer. Yeah. Doesn't make sense. Doesn't no. make sense. But can you find out before if there's a left? They should designate it. Count on right. 
Count on right. But if you're going international, there's left and occasional left here. The other thing that cannot happen on on the with the first class experience, which is, and it's happened to me before. If you sit in the back of the first class, if you're if you're if you're last of sixteen, or I was, they will hand you a menu when you level out, and you'll find something you'll like. <laughs> It'll be gone when they get to you. They had a bunch of crap offerings, and they had a hamburger, which I've never seen on a flight before. I was intrigued. So I was like, I'm going to get the hamburger. When she got to me, out of burgers. I said, how many burgers did you pack? She said, four. I <laughs> yeah. said, there's 16 <laughs> there's 16 yeah. souls in I'm first class you. and burger looks better than all your other offerings yeah. you know like, yeah that's why they're gone i'm like listen you need a fucking burger for every human being in first I agree. class and an extra one if i'm fucking stoned. for 500 bucks a pop they right. should have everything right and as i've said for many years then you need to back it out if I'm paying an extra 500 bucks because I get a wider seat and I get drink service and I get a menu, good. But if there's something off the menu, back off 80 right. bucks. Yeah, back I it agree, out. man. I totally agree on that. That's ridiculous that the seat one gets the choice of a hamburger and then seat 16, you're shit out of luck. They never bring 16 of everything. So what'll happen is, is if it's like they have steak and the vegan cauliflower offering, yeah. you're out of the fucking steak by the time yeah. they get to your fucking yeah. sorry yeah. ass. Yeah. You, you do not want to be in the back of first class. They're always out of whatever by the time they get yeah. there. Then the other thing, I don't know. I was surly, but... You should be. The, the offering, the food, came with a shrimp, a shrimp bowl, like a little shrimp salad, right? And, and on all the shrimp salads, a wedge of lemon on top. But when I ordered my vodka soda water with lemon, I got the packet of powdered lemon. So I had to take the shrimp-infused lemon oh. and squeeze my sh- made a shrimp drink out of, out, out of that my... That is hilarious. But I'm like, do you guys do lemon or don't you do lemon? Because you're doing lemon on top of the shrimp, but I just ordered a fucking high... Okay, it's I'm a bar. You. It's a bar. It's a bar. Yeah. You pay an extra 500 bucks. Yeah. You pull up to the bar. You sit there. You Come order up. your drink, and your bartender looks at his watch and goes, I'll see you in a couple hours. Yeah. Uh, the football game <laughs> just started. We'll see you midway through the third quarter. Yep. Can, imagine that. Imagine kickoff is at 10 a.m. out here, right? And you're sitting down at that I'm sports you. bar you paid 500 extra bucks for, and you order a drink for the bartender, and he goes, oh, they, they just kicked off. Uh, see about the beginning of the fourth quarter. Maybe, maybe toward the end of the third quarter, I'll see if I can get my drink out. And then he gets the drink out, and then he gives you vodka, soda, water, and powdered lemon. That's unbelievable to me. For uh, everybody's paying five hundred dollars more, that's a lot of lemons you could buy. Yeah, they should have sixteen <laughs> lemons on that flight too. Sixteen lemons and sixteen. One hundred percent. Here's the problem: the, the the airlines no longer their number one form of revenue. I think is buying tickets. I don't think that's their number one form of revenue. I think these these airlines are making so much money off these credit cards now. Like that, they've been talking about. Like they're becoming banks basically. That's why. They they want you to take all the credit cards. They they're making so much money off these credit cards. They have these now these new lounges that you can go to airports. So if you have like an Amex card, you can go to the Delta lo- lounge. And these lounges are you eat for free, you could shower, you could charge your phone, Wi Fi, watch yeah. the football game. It's a completely different experience. They're making so much money off these credit cards. They built. They're probably the reason why they're redoing all these airports just for these lounges. Oh, you reminded me of another reason to be upset. I was, for years, I have one of those black American Express cards, nice. right? <laughs> oh, you think it's nice. You think it's nice. And those things come in like a hand-tooled leather folder yeah, and yeah. stuff. <laughs> and there's a picture of a hot chick who's your personal concierge. And it's always like, hey, man, 
if you're in Chicago on a, and it's 2 a.m. and you need a mandolin string, you just call this bitch. <laughs> she will bring it to your hotel room. Like, that's the kind of service we offer with this black card, you know? And it's yeah. a lot of talk about lots of personal service. Well, they used to say you could get into any lounge with the black card. You can get into no lounges now. But LAX does have a Centurion Lounge. You yeah. flash that card, you hang out at the lounge. The problem is, is it's in the Bradley International Airport. Oh, different And point. all the flying I'm doing is Chicago, New York, right. Wisconsin. You know, there's no lounge, right? But I find out that Hawaiian Airlines is in the Bradley International Airport. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. And Boom. that's where the Centurion Lounge is. But out of a movie, leave late, just late. Uber guys, traffic, like it, it, a <laughs> shit show. Had the craziest Uber guy conversation ever. Like angry Israeli, middle aged. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Picture, I want you to picture. Possibly Armenian. Possibly. I want you to picture Dana White, but thrown out of the Israeli army yeah, and yeah. broke yeah, yeah. But, and angrier than yeah, Dana yeah, White, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> With a couple drinks, you know? Broke Israelis are <laughs> dangerous. <laughs> the guy the guy pulls up the street, right? Yeah. Pulls up my street. I live off of uh, PCH in Malibu. He pulls up and he's heading up the hill. It's like one of those steep hill streets, tight, hard to turn around. If you want to drive all the way through the street, you'll get you'll end up back on PCH, but two miles down. And 20 minutes later. So I come down there and I go, okay, we're running late. We're in a rush. I got suitcase, throw the suitcase in the trunk. I go to the guy, goes, listen, we, we got, we got, you know, ways to say in an hour and 15 minutes to LAX. Uh, we got about an hour and 10. Otherwise, we're going to miss this flight. I go, turn it around. Turn the car around. Yeah. I'm going to go back up and get the Adelf bag. I'll be down. There. He goes, no. He's like, starts waving what? me off like his hand. His hand starts flying in the air. And he's like, no, no. And I go, no, 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 turn around. You got to turn the car around, go down the hill. We're going to we're going to LAX. You know, when you're in the middle of Malibu, in the middle of PCH, LAX is to the left and Santa Barbara, right. know, Kevin Again, Costner's to house to is yeah. to the right. <laughs> there is nothing. There's nothing to the right. There's no Burbank Airport. There's no John Wayne Airport. There's no LA. Every airport... It's to the left right. when you're at Duke's and PCH. It's like, you, you got to go left coming down the hill. So he goes, no, it's like, he's like, he's like waving me off, you know? And I go, okay, all right. I don't know what this is, but I go back up. I get my next piece of luggage, right? Throw in the back. I go, okay, I have about three minutes here. Just now I stand in front of the car. I go, turn the car, t -t 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 go in the driveway and turn the car around. It's going to take you a minute. It's a four point yeah. turn. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Traffic coming down. You stop. You know, I go, just turn around. We're, we're going to the airport. We're going that way. We're going that way. We're going down the yeah, hill. And, right. he, and he's, he's waves me off again. He's like a fucking pitcher. <laughs> he just got a <laughs> no, curveball. No, it's like, no, no. No, no, <laughs> like, no, I go, just, just turn. Like I, and there's a language thing here, so I, I'm realizing I'm, what is going I'm on? like, I'm like going. We're not. No, we're not going this way. We're going that way. Yeah. Just turn around. Yeah. Huh? No. He, like waves me off. All right. Finally, jump in the car late, and he goes. He points straight up the hill. He goes this way. I go, no, no. I, first off, we're just going up into the Malibu yeah, Hills. Yeah, we're, yeah. we're going to LAX. We got to yeah. get on PCH and head toward the 10. And he's like, no. So now we're driving up the uh, hill. You know the feeling of being late for an airport? The worst. And your back is to the airport and you're getting <laughs> further away from the airport? Now, this guy's now looking for places to turn around. Like, uh, is this driveway? We're going to make it. Now nah, we'll go up a little further. I'm like, turn around. <laughs> turn around, which I've been telling him to do for 20 minutes now. We turn around, we go down the hill, we get to PCH. We're on the hillside of PCH or facing Dukes, you know. And he goes, We going right? We're going right? <laughs> we're, we're not yeah, driving to San Francisco. It's yeah. LAX. Yeah. It's the only, it's that direction. He's like, Oh, okay. okay. Uh, goes, he misses every fucking. 
he misses every off ramp. He, he's he's all over the fucking road. He's yelling at me the whole time. Like, is there a second stop? Where's the second stop? I'm like, there is no second stop. We're going. What is the number? What is the number? I go, what number? LAX. We're going to the airport. What is the number? What is the number? I'm like, I don't know what the fucking address is for LAX. It's yeah. It's a one one seven five two Houston Street. It's like it's fucking. It's an airport. Yeah. You and go to the know? air. You drive for Uber. It's probably the number one destination <laughs> for Uber. You yeah. were just been, there forty just there. minutes ago. Yeah. Yeah. That's all you do. This is this is your beat. You're ever you're driving everyone to LAX. Right. 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 He's like, what is the number? I'm like, I don't, nobody, I don't know what the number is. It's LAX. You bring us to the airport. This fucking misses ever. I'm looking at his ways thing and he keeps missing that shit next to you. Just know, recalibrate. Just side streets all the way there, parked in traffic, uh-huh. running late. I get there, get the bags, like full, full, full chest flop sweat. Yeah. You know that? That feeling where you've gone through your undershirt, but yeah. your overshirt's not showing it yeah, yet, but yeah. it's coming. It's coming. Because the, 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 the T-shirt is drenched. Mm-hmm. The overshirt is not quite hit yet. Yeah, yeah, A little yeah. pitting out. Been there. But just full full undershirt sweat through. Uh-huh. Bags, dragging, hustling. Find out that the, that the Hawaiian Airlines terminal is underneath the... Underneath the runway, like one of the people, the five part people mover where you go down, like it, it ain't in. It's the end, the furthest, the worst, the yeah. furthest you can travel is from the front of the Bradley terminal to the Hawaiian Airlines terminal, which is all the way through, all the way to the back, all the way back up, like all the way to the left. And I'm just, as I'm <laughs> chugging through the airport, Hearing my name being paged, uh, dra- oh my god! Dragging the fucking bags, I look up and I see Centurion Lounge with a, like an arrow, Come and I'm like, in. "You motherfuckers! <laughs> you motherfuckers!" <laughs> I literally, I wanted to run in like a marathon runner and grab like two beers and just <laughs> yeah. douse myself with it while I was running down the terminal, <laughs> throwing the beer bottle angrily at the wall. <laughs> like, uh, oh my god! Oh yeah. So that was it my is travel. Crazy. Sir. And like I have this theory that like Google Maps is working with big oil to mm. drive you all over the place. Mm. Cause you put an uh, address in Google Maps, it will be thirty minutes more than uh uh than, than the other ways. Yeah, I know. You can't use Google Maps anymore. This guy was on the Google Maps. You're on the ways. You're yeah. saying you're getting there 14 minutes before him, <laughs> yeah. but you're looking at him. This guy's already yelled at you because you told him to turn his car around. What? How's this exchange going to go? Mm. We're trying to get him on the ways. He's angry the whole yeah. fucking time. If, I, if I'm an Uber, I'm doing Google Maps because I get more drive for that. If I'm driving Uber, if I'm in the car trying to get, I'm doing ways, man. I can't believe how, the difference in time. And it's and like try to do this. Use Google Map when you know where you're going and see what it tells you to do. It'll be like go over here, drive through Narnia, That's come right. on back. The uh, other thing I was thinking about from this trip was I never get why companies entities like don't kind of get their shit together and that sounds broad but what i'm saying is it's like you know when i used to go to zanku chicken i'd ask for the 50 50 shawarma plate i want the 50 50 with the chicken and then the beef and the lamb and they'd go everyone asks for that we don't do it i'm like okay then if everyone asks you should do then it. you should do it because yeah. that's part of being a business, right? Yeah. Everybody asks, but but you don't do it. There's demand. You are you have so supply. right, man. Right. You are so right. I on was that. Dawson Van. I don't know if you have that video. I was up at the resort looking down. Got up in the morning, standing on my balcony, looking down at the beautiful ocean. It's tranquil. It's the North Shore. It's quiet. People go there for tranquility. Yeah, I tranquility. Get that. They don't. Uh, Honolulu's a beehive of ugly kids. tourists. Oh, yeah. Are, Everyone's eating spam. They're eating spam. Dog they're, the bounty hunter. They're on their rascals with their oxygen supply. Yeah. Like, it is <laughs> it is Pahrump. Like, you think you're in paradise. You're in Pahrump. It, it is a mass of dumb people yeah, who got yeah. bargain tickets yeah. and are just clout just just taking up room right <laughs> yeah i don't even know why it's people fremont street go there in, yeah, in it, las vegas it, it's the opposite of hawaii yeah it's just 
tons of humanity, tons of addiction, and just even the ocean, which is blue, just has tons of fat people just yeah, floating yeah. all clustered Wearing together. Shirts. A shark's dream, <laughs> right? So you go to the North Shore. The North Shore is about an hour and 10 minutes away. Tranquility. So you go there to experience Hawaii, which is nature, the ocean, and tranquility. And the, the, the ocean is beautiful. Uh, up on the sixth floor, balcony, beautiful view. And I wake up one morning at like 8.30 in the morning, and I, and I look down, and I notice there's a yoga class going on out on the lawn. So what these people wanted at 8 in the morning is tranquility. It's yoga on the lawn in front of the ocean. ocean. Because oh. they could have done the yoga in the studio, in the building, right, but that's right, not right. tranquility. Right. You could do that in Reseda. They want the ocean. They want nature. They want tranquility. So I look down and I see these eight or ten people doing their down dog and their yoga poses. And then I look over and there's a fat Samoan on a tractor mower. I'll, I'll show you the clip. It'll, it'll, uh, our search it'll computer like, just took a crap. So oh, stand okay. by. All right. You'll, 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 have a, you'll have a laugh that these guys are all repeating their mantra well, this fat guy in the Briggs and Stratton is just making his rounds around them. <laughs> that Grr. is hilarious. And they're just like, breathe in through your nose. <laughs> just busting around them on a tractor mower. Guy's like, I got to work at some point. <laughs> what I'm <laughs> saying is, is super expensive resort. If you, in fact, are going to schedule morning relaxation yoga on the lawn in front of the Pacific, right. tell the fat Samoan yep. on the John Deere, he's got to take that hour off. You're totally right. That's my schedule theory. Schedule that shit. Yeah. yeah. That's LA uh, const street construction. If you're going to work on roads in LA, do it at three in the morning when nobody's driving. Right. Don't do it right at noon when we're all trying to get to lunch or back to work. All right, we'll see if the computer reboots. Yeah, it's still rebooting. So, All right, well, maybe we'll take a quick break, and then we'll come back, <laughs> and I'll play that. that. This is me on the sixth floor with my phone just filming this, <laughs> this, this menagerie, this, this scene. But I also, like, I really do think it's like this is a first-class resort. I mean, these rooms are 1000 bucks a night. You're offering all these amenities. Outdoor yoga. AM, outdoor. These aren't for the fucking guys right. that are drinking all night, getting right. fucking wasted, and eating a bunch of curly fries. These are the people who have their mm -hmm. shit together. They're well hydrated. They went to bed at 9 p.m. They had a half a glass of wine with dinner, and they want to wake up in the morning and experience the, the majesty of the Hawaiian Ocean. And this is what they get. All right, we'll take a quick break. Be right Yes, we're taking a break, Dawson, so don't point your hands out. We'll be right back right after this. Well, let me tell you about my friends over at Land's End Business. Uniforms. Yeah, you got to have the right one. That's right. It's part of your merch, part of your branding. I should say branding. Yeah, you want to look good, you want to look sharp, and people want to know where you work. So don't slap a logo on a generic shirt. Try Land's End Business. Made-to-order uniforms that become part of your brand. Since 1993, thousands of businesses have counted on Land's End Business to outfit employees. Whether you're a carpet cleaner, done that, moving company, eh, did some of that on the side, worked at a pizza shop, you are covered. No more. Fidgeting and itchy work shirts, premium fabric that fits employees and makes them comfortable and happy. Email, chat, and phone customer support so they got you covered. Even set up an online store where employees can order items they need without worrying about inventory. It's Land's End. Am I right, Dawson? See why thousands of companies count on Land's End Business. Go to business.landsend.com slash Adam and use promo code Adam for 20% off. That's business.landsend.com slash Adam. Promo code Adam for 20% off. Well, as uh, promised, there's this uh, vid taking about 8.15 in the morning. He watches on our YouTube hotel. page, too. Yeah, it's about one, two, three, four, five, six or eight <laughs> or nine people. Got the mats people. out there. They're Got the doing mats the pose. Out. They're doing the pose. Here we go. <laughs> oh, jeez. 
riding mower. <laughs> this guy's mowing the entire yep. fucking time, 30 feet away from these people that are they're shooting for tranquility. Yeah. The only reason they're there is for tranquility. And they got to hear the guy in the Briggs and Strat and just circumnavigate their little yoga group the entire 100%. time. 100%. That you is crazy. You could mow that fucking lawn anytime yeah. you want. Yeah. Now, we're going to do it during the yoga class. Unbelievable. That's what you're starting to learn when you go to this customer service stuff that, like, common sense isn't that common anymore. Also, if I'm the yoga uh, instructor, I'm like, Soon as the class is over, I walk right back into the building. I go find the manager, and I'm like, I don't want chemo fat calves yeah. fucking doing hot laps <laughs> on his fucking tractor while I'm up there talking about breathing in and yeah, letting all the stress out. 100%. Can you work, work this shit out, would you? 100%. Yeah. I totally agree with that. And chemo, next time you see a group of Howleys getting in a down dog position, uh, dismount. Yeah. Dis fucking mount. Take that cigarette break. Yeah, yeah. Go, go trim the bushes by yes. while, while that's happening. Then you can get on your your little tractor. Yes, I totally agree. That <laughs> was uh, now. For some reason, I'm the only one bothered by. I'm not even in the yoga class. Yeah, I'm. You're upset for that. I'm for upset. Them. I'm a champion of yoga yogers. Yeah, and I'm okay. pissed on their behalf. Yeah. Uh, and listen, I don't know, much like the, um, oh, we're out of hamburgers in first class. Like if, th- That yoga class ain't free. That's 40 bucks. Damn. Yeah. I, if I took the yoga class, I'd be like, I'd like 20 bucks back because there's a fat guy in a fucking tractor going doing circles around me while I was trying to. Yeah, it's I was hard. Pretty, by the way, it's not like that bitch has a catalytic converter on it. Right. That thing's just straight two-stroke into my lungs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm breathing the worst air on the planet. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I can't see the fucking ocean because this guy's ass crack is blocking the view. <laughs> now, that's it. I, what's wrong with everyone? I, but by the way, I was there for two days. I caught this. I, this goes on. Every day they this got is not the, the first time they got the mower guy they got the groundskeeper guy You're scheduled totally right, from seven thirty to ten and they got the yoga from eight to nine. This happens all day every day. Bring back honor, bring back shame. That's yes. what we need right now. <laughs> or just a shame. little honor. Or just honor shame. be like, oh, people are meditating. Let me go do something else, and then when they're done, I can trim everything. Because you're saying this is ten in the morning. I got all day to do this, so I can do it at another time. Bring back the shame of like, hey man, you ruined their you, you their yoga, and that we need that. We need that more than ever. There's no shame anymore in any game. They, they even though that's not what this guy's trying to do, but this this notion of going viral people are doing the most ridiculous stuff in hopes of going viral and it, it there's no shame what I, are you doing i there's not it, it's yes and and we need shame uh the, i'm way past honor <laughs> all right that's a bike on that's out with the negro and 22 skidoo like it's gone it's a bygone era well we need uh the guy from jurassic park to bring honor back like we found we, we found some dna from macarthur we give you yeah. honor park yes yeah there look at that man throwing away his own garbage it's awesome and not uh not pretending as a handicap to cut in line so all right that's done but shame I would like, but you know what? I, you know what I would like. I'll, I'll tell you what happens a lot. Just a little good old fashioned communication. So I have conversations with people all the time where I go like, "Hey, wh- why doesn't the yoga guy say to the guys driving the tractor, hey, I do my classes on Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday at 8 a.m.' Could you not do that?" And then people go. Why should he? Or I think they know what they're doing. I'm like everyone has this weird answer, and I'm like, well, they should have this conversation. They're not going to have it. They've never had. By the way, this has been going on for 13 years. I'm sure. I just walked in in the middle of right. it. Right. Like I walked into a domestic situation where the chick had two black eyes. Yeah. yeah. And, and and the five year old running around with shit in their diapers, and then went. And the husband's going, "This is the first day." <laughs> you know I mean? It's like, no, it ain't. Yeah. This is this is a way of life. 
Well, and also it's like, well, the reason some somebody should say something is because everything is being done for the experience of the guest who's paying a lot of money to be at this hotel, right? Oh. E- even him mowing the grass is so the experience of having a well-kept grass is part of the presentation of staying at the hotel. Those people doing yoga are staying at the hotel. You're ruining the experience. Well, speaking of ruin, ruining the experience, an audio clip, so... God, I wish I had a picture of it, but I was so out of it. But but it happened to me. I remember years, the first time I went to Maui. Yeah, I think it was the first time I went to Maui. I went with Kimmel a million years ago. And I stayed in my home, hotel room, this really nice like resort in Maui. And it was like six in the morning. It was neat, neat, neat. And I looked out the window and it, my room... And the whole side of the hotel runs along the whole alley that runs along the side of it. Like, when you look at a hotel from the front, at least in in that area, you'll see to one side or the other side of it, they got a long alley that goes there to drop off food, pick up food, you know, all the trucks, all, you know, the the hotel has a thousand units. There's got to be a lot of shipping, a lot of garbage, a lot of in and a lot of out. And I was in Maui, and the whole time I was there. And it's not like Saturday's garbage day. Every day is reload the food and take the old garbage. But they do the shit at 5.30 in the morning. And I got in Thursday night. I went to bed at like 11. And at 5.20, knee, 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 like backing down the driveway. And it's like there's an entire wall of hotel that is being, I'm on the, Fourth floor, the uh, the hotel goes to seventeen. Oh man! It is a huge Maui hotel, and I get up at. I, I'm sleeping with a noisemaker on, and it cuts right through. It's not like I got the door open or anything. The slider shut. From inside the hotel room, I, I recorded at 5.20 in the morning. This is a penetrating frequency, and if you are experiencing symptoms of tinnitus, please remove your headphones. Now it's at 5.20, and that's me walking toward the balcony door, but I haven't opened it. That's from that's inside That's inside my room. At 5.20 in the fucking morning, that's Thursday night, and then Friday night, it does it at 4.20. <laughs> I did two fucking shows Friday night. I got back to the room at 1 a.m. Inside the room, 4.20 stops and again at 5 30. yeah that is nuts. waking that's up the up. entire side of the hotel it's dark outside and by the way everyone in this hotel fucking drank all night was fucking doing the limbo dance and everything and they all just flopped out at 2 a.m and this is what they're fucking hearing on their vacation at 4 20 in the morning it where, is crazy where's the situational awareness I, of people I, because like if if i just even pull into a parking lot and my headlights, I'll turn them off so they yes. don't shine into the restaurant or something like that, right? Like, you have to know what you're doing. Outside of the balcony is a long, like, downhill service alley, and then it turns and goes the other direction, and there's a back of another hotel with all the balconies. So it's two hotels that this guy is fragging. And it's so it's, it's even bouncing off things. Uh, if there. I got in that fucking cube truck and put it in reverse... At 4.20 in the morning, it made that sound. I would get out and hand the keys crazy. to the supervisor. I like, I'm I, not, so I'm not doing it. I'm now going to wake up every human. This happened Thursday night. It happened twice Friday night. Those are the only two nights I was there. I imagine it <laughs> happens every night. I, if I ran that hotel, I'd be like, look. Someone's got to take a fucking sock and stuff it in that fucking backup beeper, or we got to clip it, or we got to do something, or we got to do the shit at at 8 a.m. You can't do this. It's dark outside. We run a fucking resort. It's 4.20 in the morning. I agree. There's not a a marine barracks outside of... Outside of San Jose. This is a fucking resort. People save... For years to spend a week at this place. Me, me, me. That fucking insane. Can it's you insane. take a beep off? Can you no. do that? Yeah. No, I mean they like can't. No, I could do it. Carry the I mean, lo- carry the shit yeah. down the driveway. 
Park up there. I want Carrie Asian Dom. women yeah. in slippers. Yes. <laughs> I want what, geishas. What you want Asian <laughs> women, the quietest of all work. I want Asian women in slippers carrying yeah, all the 100%. shit. Yeah, one hundred percent. And if you got a fucking, if you got to mule that trash out to the street, can God bless I you, Mrs. Livingston. Agree. Pack it up. Yep. Beep beep. Then another truck, like beep beep, like comes behind, and then you get to sleep for an hour, and it fucking fires up again. I, two, I don't two understand nights, that. Two, two in a row, and and by the way. I am. I don't know. Does it say on the phone like when you record the audio the timestamp? Typically, yeah. Oh, it does. All yes. right. Now, now, Ben, you gotta go get my phone, and you gotta, you got. I can't see the timestamp. And this was from a long time ago. Not the same. This is f- uh, five days ago. The beeping one too, or no? Yeah. That's from a long time. No, ago. no. The long time ago was when I was in Maui the first time with Kimmel, and it happened. Okay. But it'd been a long time. This is. Days ago, I'm saying this goes on all day, every day, and I'm just saying somebody manages that fucking hotel, right? Like, does somebody has to say something? Someone has to go like, I'm this, sure. we just, this is unacceptable. We then then we can't, and, and I'm not talking about seven a.m. And I'm not talking about 8.15, which would still be an abomination. It would be ridiculous. If, if you're on vacation and that fucking bar is packed and Duke's bar is packed at, at, at 1 a.m., it would still be an abomination at 8.10 on vacation. Yeah. But it is not. But do you have the... Yeah, according to uh, the properties on the media file, it was created on September 9th at 7.22 a.m. That's this time. I think that's that's our time. Pacific, yeah. Seven twenty-two. Now back out three hours, and you have okay, four four twenty-two. You have four twenty-two over there, and the other Jeez. one would then would say eight twenty-two or something, or eight twenty or something. What's the other one say? Because that would be Pacific time, not that oh, would have been a gift at seven fucking twenty-two. Jesus goddamn Christ. Well, I'm, all I'm saying is, is how come no one can run their fucking business? Yeah, it's like, again, it's like, I, I, and this is a big problem in Hollywood, too. It's like people have gotten away from the golden rule. And I hated this rule when I was a waiter, which is the customer's always right. They've gotten away from that. They don't care. And that's why business is suffering. And instead, I'd rather be like, I want to deal with you. I yeah. would not, you don't know, you, want people to come you back? make me not want to go to Maui right now. I'm <laughs> like, why am I going to stay there? I'd rather go to, yeah, uh, really to really Dana not. Point or something like that, right? Like, why am I going to Maui? It sounds like it's a shithole. Uh, all right. Do you have the other time? The other time must be one hour later, as I recall, or an hour and 10 minutes later. What was it, like 4.20 and there was at 5.30? Uh, for the yoga video? Is that looking at? No, I'm not looking for the time for the yoga video. Oh. I'm looking for the time for the... Backup. The thing that's we're the, talking oh, about. That's Chris. the only oh, backup paper. Yeah, that's oh, well, the only. Yeah, I apologize. I, I did. The I other did one I have times. is wonderful ranchero music. Ah, oh, that's awesome. You guys are <laughs> kicking ass. We can play that later. All right, my apologies, but it, anyway, I just feel like I want a job where I tell everyone how to run their business. I would love that job. I would well, love that. Just go job. around. Hey, you're, you're okay. Well, if you don't show well, you up, can I'm, be my, I'm substitute. You can be like my DA. Yeah, no, yeah. you can be my enforcer. I'll be your assistant. <laughs> uh, he's uh, Adam's not available. His assistant Sam will be busting everybody's balls today. That'd yeah. Be great. Yeah. I wouldn't be, uh, as once said on the Howard Stern show, I wouldn't be like all these businesses that have consultants. I would be an insultant. <laughs> I would walk in there and go, what the fuck are you retards yeah, doing? Yeah. I wouldn't go like, oh, I got a five-part plan. I'd be like, you fucking idiots. I stayed in that fucking room. Goddamn backup beaver went off at 4 fucking 20 in the goddamn morning. I barely had my socks yes. off. What the fuck are you thinking? I would be an insultant. Companies should have insultants. This is basically the premise behind Bar Rescue and yeah. uh, whatever that kitchen show is. That's Someone right. goes in there and tells you you're an idiot to your face. That's right. That's right. what I would want. I would love to do it everywhere. Fortune 500 insultant, Adam Carolla. By the way, that's basically what my brother used to do with strip bars. He would be hired to go in and take these strip bars and nobody was making any money and, and basically fire all the fatties and get everything going. That, that really? was his job. Yeah. 
Now, are the fatties hurting the business because of the aesthetic, or are they just eating too much during the businessman's brunch? Well, you know, I always, always uh, be wary of a, a strip bar with a kitchen. That's what I say, but mm. uh, probably because it's just presentation, probably. Mm. It's like you want to have the hottest chicks in the hottest place. And listen, I like big girls. I'm not judging them, and they got to take care of their bills, too. But that would be my brother if you were lazy. and de- Like, if you're fat and work hard, hey, dude, there's a, there is a niche for you. You, okay. Oh, yeah. But if you're fat and lazy, gotta go. Get I, by. I love fat hustlers. I love, I fat, love hustlers. fat people who hustle. <laughs> yeah, I do There's too, something bro. poetic and yeah. majestic <laughs> about it. Bro. You know what I mean? I love them too, bro. I love a fat athlete who hustles. Yeah. I love a fat dock worker. Like anyone who's fat and hustles, yeah, I'm with it's you. beautiful. My favorite thing, dude, is fat people dancing. Have you ever watched that? That's like a big hit. Especially fat gay men who can actually move dancing. Mm-hmm. Seems to be a big hit on Instagram and TikTok. But fat people, da- like when you see a fat person do a full split, you're like, wow, <laughs> that's majestic. <laughs> well, you know who the grandfather of that movement was was rerun from what's happening 100 percent rerun had the moves and rerun wasn't even fat by today's standards oh he wouldn't he wouldn't be fat by today's if standards. anyone wants to know the difference between the 70s and now rerun from what's happening was the fat one from what's happening who by today's standards was kind of a little bit husky yeah, little or ra- thick, round faced or something yeah. but not not, yeah. oh, do we oh, have no him dancing? He would do them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Look at that, bro. Yeah. Mystical. Pioneer of the fat man dancing. Of course, he's dead. Yeah, They're I all mean. all dead, but. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> I'm Whoa. telling you. Whoa. That Look, just no. is also that white people will let black people do anything. Right? That's, That's right. that whole. It's like he just did a power hump. In the 70s, everyone's like, oh, my God, he's got the moves. <laughs> Nobody danced fat like Rerun. Oh, shit. Oh, oh, bam, bro. Look at that. Yeah, they're all dead. Now, all right. Now, good times is where I realized I loved uh, black chicks with big tits. That's why I learned <laughs> that from when I watched uh, Good Times. Mm. The sister had such a fat rack, and I was like, oh, my God, I love that. Wait, are we talking what's happening? Are we yeah. talking good times? Good times, right? Good times is where he had a sister. Yeah, but she didn't have a big rack. Oh, I, she was hot, though. She was really hot. We, one of them had a sister with a, the, the fattest rack, and I was like, I'm in love. Because we only have one black family in my hometown, and the, 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 uh, Candy was her name. She was so hot, too. Yeah, that's a good look. Yeah. The sister rack. So when I was young, man, and like I figured a way to like stop getting bullied, what I would do is go down to the local convenience store, jack a couple porno mags, and like and, and like go to a bigger guy, go, hey, I'll give you this if you beat up that guy for me, right? Really? So if, if I could get Black Jug Magazine, I could oh. get two guys beaten up. Wow. <laughs> well, speaking of that and how times have changed, <laughs> now I'm interested in this because... I was watching, uh, I watch in Just Like That on HBO Max. Do you like that it's Max now? It somewhat upsets me because Cinemax was like the redheaded stepchild forever. And now Mm. it's like taken over. I don't, I I don't pay attention to, to the names that much because names have all been sort of usurped and destroyed. You know what I mean? Because the gold standard was the gold standard. And now the gold is the bottom, and you got platinum and diamond. Mm. So gold oh, interesting. used to be number one. Yeah. You got the fucking gold medal, the gold standard. That guy's got a golden personality gold and his record. gold yeah. records and stuff. Gold is at the bottom. <laughs> then we invented like platinum and diamond, which are, which are above gold. You know, I got a black Centurion card, which is above a gold American Express card. Yeah. Gold might be the starter card or business card or whatever. The point is, is can't pay attention to names right. anymore because they've all been used up. I mean, you can blame Starbucks, you know, I mean, the small, medium, oh, yeah. large. And now and they got that, that beer ball of, uh, of coffee you can get. Yeah, everyone's just got a name. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. What? When I was sitting on that fucking flight in first class and I got a six ounce box of water, 
a box of water for paying an extra 500 bucks. And I was like, first off, the the box of water is a miniature box of water. Like, you've been sitting there for two hours. You just suck it down, and you're ready for your next box. Raindrop. Uh but I was thinking, like, what if I ordered a big box, like a shoe box yeah, of yeah. water? What they just yeah. <laughs> shoe box? Was that six hundred bucks? Just dump that into my face. All right. So the way things were versus the way things are now. I was watching, and just like that, which is Sex and the City reboot or whatever. Oh my God! You're so brave. Did I you lose it. a bet? I watch. I he watch, loves it. I watch every episode. I've seen the movies in the theaters. One time by mistake, or on a dare or something. But no, no, I didn't lose a bet. What? The one time was a joke. It was a joke. You're brave, my friend. I watch every episode, and I've seen and I've seen every episode of the reboot, too. But Sex and City was like a '90s show, and they were all into drinking and fucking and sucking, and it, it was not it was PC great. at all. Now it's all fucking woke. It's got to be woke. It's a bunch of fucking chicks yeah. in Manhattan and a bunch of gay guys riding for the chicks. It's all fucking. You're totally right. It's woke t- to shit now. I still watch it, but I, I look for all the woke moments. So um, so Sarah Jessica Parker, uh, big, her husband died on the, pe- on the Peloton, Peloton. Yeah. Right? <laughs> of course. And she's <laughs> she got back with her old beau, who's the guy from my big fat Greek wedding. Shit, I gotta think of that actor's name. You've seen him a million times, but no one can remember. No, I know who you're. I think I know who you're talking about. Name. He's He's on Wings, right? No, no. He seems like he was on Wings. You, you go. Oh yeah, that guy's been in everything, but he always plays like the sort of cuckolded neighbor. Like he's never really the big boss Uh, man. Isn't that crazy? John Corbett. Is that crazy if that's your 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 casting? Is cuckold guy? You always get casted <laughs> as cuckold guy. Well, he was the boyfriend. Then she she was engaged to him, and then she dumped him and got back together with Big. And then Big had the stroke on the on the bike, and now he's back. Okay, but but he's a new kind of dad. He's and going this, to the bullpen. This is what I'm saying. He's got a, he got married. He got a couple of had a couple of kids. He got divorced, and now he's traveling into Manhattan to hang out with Carrie and they're in love, but he's got his kids back in Virginia and he's got like a 14 year old named Wyatt and he's a pain in the ass. And every time that he's like fucking Carrie balls deep mid stroke and the phone rings and he's like picks up the phone. Oh fuck. It's white. Hold on. Puts a towel on, goes into the bathroom, sits in the tub, you know, it's like, it's a good dad. Okay. If, if I called my dad mid pump yeah. when I was 14, yeah. he would have fucking Nobody's thrown an ashtray at me. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's not running to the, and then it's like, it's like a lot of like, he's out on a date with Carrie and they're having a good time and they're talking about being in love. And then the phone rings like, hold on. It's white. Like let that shit go to, Voice yeah. Why Why well, can wait? And he picks up the fucking phone. It's like, what's going on? Oh, what, what'd your mom say to you? Hold on. Carrie, hold on. And I go stand outside in the restaurant. Uh, like every fucking time this fucking kid calls, this fucking girls- cuckolded puss has to pick up the phone for his first eighth no, grader in it. Virginia. But in women a- love this. Like they're well, that's the whole thing. Eating it up. So right. if you watch the have you watched the Spider Verse? No, I've, I've seen the first one. It is the greatest woke. Now who's thing. gay? Right. <laughs> well, I, I'm flying home on Delta, and they they're show what in movie, so I watch it. It is so woke, it's insane. But the one white guy in it is he's fighting crime with a baby the whole time. Mm. That's the whole thing. <laughs> Peter Parker's fighting crime, holding on to a baby. So uh, this is the woke stuff. So if, if you have you guys been watching uh, Winning Time at all? Yes. Love it. Okay, first season's great, right? Jerry Buss is banging everything and moves. Magic's banging everything and moves. Season two, now we're all getting married and everybody Where's has marital problems. Where's right? the banging? It's the same thing they did to Entourage. The first two seasons of Entourage was every man's dream. And then they said, uh-uh, you can't have nice things. <laughs> so we're going to get rid of all the banging and all the fun. And now everyone wants to be in a serious relationship and get married. Well, they went woke on and just like that. And so this guy, John Corbin, he's Corbett. Corbett, sorry. He's he's laying with uh Carrie and they're like kissing and talking and making plans for the future and all this shit. And then all of a sudden the phone rings. It's Wyatt, but it's the mom. Wyatt's gotten to an accident. He's back in Virginia. 
and he just pops up. It's two in the morning. He's like, I, I gotta, I gotta make a, I gotta, I, I gotta. Does Wyatt have I, any I, I hobbies? Okay, no. he call his dad. Wyatt, so okay, the wife calls. At like two in the morning or something. Maybe that scene is right before this scene. Maybe we can find that. It, the, 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 the wife call. This guy's in his fucking jammies. He's getting ready to uh, try to come for a second time with <laughs> Carrie. He's just popped a Viagra. <laughs> the fucking phone rings and his little piece of shit son, Wyatt, 14 year old troublemaker, is always in a shit mood. Like he's always FaceTime, like, Dad, where are you? You know, oh my like, God. okay. No. He broke his collarbone. He broke his collarbone. By the way, Every fucking 14-year-old first first day of football practice breaks a fucking collarbone. But he breaks his collarbone, and this cuckolded homo pops up and goes like, I, I got I to gotta catch a fly. And then Carrie jumps up and goes, yeah, I'll see what I can. No one goes like, hey, broke his collarbone, so he's going to yeah. be in a sling. He's okay. Yeah. People yeah. have done that before. And then the We've... biggest, the thing that makes me the biggest dick in the world, where like the guy's like, because I had people. Like, I, I got to get on a plane. I'm like, are you an orthopedic surgeon? Like, no. Well, what are you gonna do? Like by the by the time you get there, yeah. he's back home. And he's already done. He's eating Tylenol and pudding. Like, what, what do you just stroke his hand? <laughs> stroke his open hand? Like he broke his fucking collarbone. But she pops up. He's like, I, I gotta go. Then he gets there, and the end of part one of this uh, finale. Now, do we have? Is him? it a movie or a TV show? I have it queued. The, the search computer's crashed. For uh, okay. All right. So should we play the end? The end is he's in the parking lot of the hospital. The son, uh, well, we'll see what happened to the son. But see how the dad reacts. And see if your dad would have been pissed or bawling like a bitch in a fucking parking lot. <laughs> I'm guessing Search that's how computer he still down. Oh, here Let's we go. See. I have it cute. It's just not playing. Oh, Okay. Oh, There's a lot of fucking buildup with this. Oh, she's committee. looking rough. <laughs> she, Carrie? Well, she's 56 yeah, years old. Yeah, I get it, now. man. I get it, dude. You know what's interesting when you tell me that, like, the kid is a dick? I'm like, I'm wondering, oh, is this going to play now? Okay. Yeah, okay. Um, he broke his leg in two places. She didn't want to tell me until I got here. Go, go back to the very. Uh, give a little head on it. Thank you. There you go. All right, the she's phone, phone rings. rings. Carrie's going to answer it. He's back in Virginia. Beautiful bedroom. I know. Hi. Hi. I'm at the hospital. How is he? It's more than his collarbone. Oh. He broke his leg in two places. She didn't want to tell me until I got here. What did happen? <laughs> All right, what happened? He got in a fight with his mom. Uh, he snuck out of the house and hitched the 30 miles back to the farm. And had a few beers... Then he got in my truck to drive back. And he hit a tree. And he totaled the truck. All right, so oh we'll, God, we'll break his other he, leg, right? Why was he going to the farm? He said, he said, I want to sleep at my dad's house. I should have been there, Gary. I should have been there. Oh, my God. Oh. What a puss. <laughs> By the way, this is every acting class dream role, by the yeah. way. This is you doing an acting class. Everyone tells you, oh, my God, you emote it so well. Submit that for the Emmy. Yeah. Oh. She's like, and right, just go like back that. 10 seconds. Just, I, this is him falling away. at the, uh, that. First off, she's hooked up with a puss. That's yeah. the problem. I should have been there, Gary. I should have been there. Honey. Oh, Honey. Oh, Is that good God. acting to turn to no. your back to the camera? Hey, okay, breaks heel. The heel. <laughs> the heel. Hello. The heel. Hello. Listen, and just like your that. fucking son hitchhiked to yeah. a barn, polished off a six or Mickey's, and then got in your fucking pickup truck and plowed it into an oak tree. And all he did was break his leg. <laughs> You'd be like, no, I'm going to get home and yeah. I'm going to fucking murder him. Yeah. 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 Who's paying for that fucking truck? And by the way, what could you have done? You're at your house. He's driving from his mom's house. There's literally nothing you could have done at that moment. No, I'm glad he... the guy wasn't in Wings. <laughs> yeah, he would have ruined Wings. <laughs> he was in that Alaskan movie about Alaska. He was like a sheriff or, something, or that television show, yes. whatever that yes. was. Yeah. I find this interesting. No, be- now, wait a minute, though. To be fair to the script writers. Yeah. The 
the kid, Wyatt, who's the 14-year-old fucking pain in the ass who's been consuming their relationship. Wyatt's going to ru- ruin their relationship because he calls every 10 minutes like, Dad, where are you? By the way, ask me if I wanted to see my dad when I was 14. Are you fucking nuts? <laughs> Hanging out with your dad at 14 is the worst <laughs> afternoon ever. You yeah. want to be with your friends smoking pot and looking at black jugs. <laughs> <laughs> I love black jugs. But he got into an argument with his mom hitchhiked to his dad's house, his barn house. Dad wasn't there. So he got drunk, got got in his pickup truck and crashed it into a tree. And this cuckolded wuss is bawling that he wasn't at the house. But it's like, hey, I got a new bitch in Manhattan. Yeah, for I'm, sure. I'm going to spend a little weekend time yeah. with my new lady friend. And he's like, I should have been there. Well, then if you should have been there, then what you're saying is, is your new girlfriend is who you want, you're you going to marry and move in with is saying, like, when can you come out to Manhattan? And you go, I got to sit alone in Virginia in my cabin. Yeah, crying Because there's an off things. chance that my son may get in a blowout with, his, with my old lady and come over here. First of all, like, who doesn't leave their house with their keys? Why are your keys sitting around in the house that your 14-year-old drunk kid can find in and drive your car, right? I mean, like, my keys would be on me. Yes. That's Good my whole point. thing. Like, well, oh, how did this drunk kid find your keys? Maybe you should have hit them better. Yeah, or brought them with you on your key ring. 100%. So here's my inter- here's an interesting thought I just had about this. So they're painting the the son, the child of your boyfriend as a just a pain in the ass, which is interesting because we have this kind of epidemic right now of single women, right, not having children. And they're entering this age where they're just trying to date somebody. And is this kind of playing to that thing where it's like, oh, this kid, this guy's kids from another chick is a giant pain in the ass and ruining our fun because he's always concerned about the kid. This kind of plays into who is watching the show besides Adam Carolla, right? Like it's like. <laughs> Like Adam Carolla and some fucking box wine moms, right? That's yeah. who's watching the show. And who plays kind of the bad guy? The child of the past relationship, which is like kind of playing into this mm. demographic. You might be able to find... Oh, you have the earlier scene. All right. He's in bed with Carrie. They're in their pajamas. He's making pillow talk when the fucking phone rings. First off... I feel that hurt. Your phone shouldn't even be on during p- fucking pillow talk. Yeah. It, sh- it should be on. If you think you might get laid, it should be on airplane mode. But all right, we'll go back, guys. I'm afraid I get mad at you all over again. No, it was a mistake, too. <laughs> That's what I was doing last night. Uh-oh. It's Wyatt. No, Wyatt's mom. Kathy. Why is she calling this late? Hey, everything all right? Uh huh. Well, other than that, is he all right? Uh-oh. All right, let me get off this call so I can see about flights. Flights? Oh, Wyatt's in the ER. He broke his collarbone. He, he drove my truck into a tree. But he's, he's only 14, and this is Kathy's week. How did he even get to the truck? Um, it, isn't it at the farm? Yeah. No, I'm, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't have the details. I just, I just got to get a flight in. By the way, I've seen that question asked by my girlfriend before, and she's not inquisitive. She's just giving me shit at that point. <laughs> That's right. Is it this our weekend? Why are we dealing with this on my week? I felt that energy before. That's where you're sliding it at. Just time for a blowjob. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> That's pretty good. Flight. This sounds like but a there's, Kathy problem. There's some yeah. serious rom- romanticizing of farmers these days, but if this guy owns a fucking farm, he's got shit to do every day on that farm. Yeah, now, yeah. He's, he you owns can, a puss farm. Okay. He's got... You know, kind of, you know, glam farm, I guess. <laughs> okay. You know, not a, not a real working farm. Mm. But but the point is, is you're in Manhattan. It's, uh, I don't know, midnight. And your son is 14, fucked up big time, stole your truck. But he broke his collarbone. Bro- a collarbone break is kind of thing that happens on a football field every 10 minutes. And the guy walks it back to the locker room and then they like reset it. And then you get a, a sling. Why are you fucking booking a flight? from Manhattan back to Virginia to see your fucking, to yell at your son. Like he's, he's just there. 
It didn't sound like to, he was going to yell at him, though. He just sounded like he was just and why want to console him. And why isn't he saying, like, have him rub some dirt on it. I'll yeah. call him in the morning. Or Walk it off. Is he is he hurt or is he injured? Yeah. Is well, he at, did he go to the doctor? He's at All the right. hospital. He's there. Hit you up later. Is there the chance the that something might go bad fast, or is he going to be? Are they going to? Are they going to save him? Right. I mean, if he's going to be okay, and he's just going to be in a sling. I can deal with this in the morning and go back right. to knocking the bottom out of my new girlfriend. Right. And she pops up and starts looking for for well, travel options. We don't too. know how hysterical Kathy was being. We didn't hear her end of the call. Broken collarbone is all we got. Yeah. I'm just saying, suck it up, bro. And by the way, learn a lesson. Steal dad's truck, steal his suds, ram it into a tree. I'm not going to come running by your bedside crying. You're getting fucking grounded. Yeah. So you're going to show up. He's got broken collarbone, two bu- two broken legs, and then you're going to smack him. Now he's got a concussion. Okay. So. That's right. All right. We'll take a break. We got some news. And uh, we'll do that right after this. Let me tell you about Angie. Homeowners. You know, it's a lot of work to own a home. Whether it's uh, everyday maintenance, repairs, or dream projects. It can be hard to even know where to start. All you need is Angie. You're home for everything home. Find a skilled local pro who will deliver quality and experience. Over 20 years of home service experience. Bring them your project online or with the Angie app. Answer a few questions and Angie handles the rest. Look, you're busy. You don't have time to do all this stuff. Let Angie handle it. Take care of just about any home project in just a few taps. Download the free Angie mobile app today or visit online. Visit Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I dot com. A-N-G-I dot com. That's Angie. Let them do all the heavy lifting. It's time to check Adam's voicemail. Hey, Sven, Jared in Wisconsin. Hey, I took my son to your show last weekend and uh, thought you were a little hard on Crocs. They uh, come in very handy at the boat landing, jumping in the water, getting back in the truck. Just a point to ponder. Get it on. You can leave us a message at 888-634-1744. Well... Maybe I was. And so I owe you and your son an apology because you came out to the show. And I love it when the fathers bring their sons and the sons bring the dads to the shows. Oh, one other uh, woke scene, which is great. I mean, just like that. Oh, yeah. The black chick was pregnant unexpectedly. How old is she in this show about? The black chick? Yeah. Uh, I mean, we could figure out what the actress is. She's 45 45, 46. I so mean, she's, she's got, Janet jackson it right yeah, now, getting pregnant at 50? She's got three kids already with, with, with her husband, who's supposed to be black, although he doesn't look black. But that's another scene I'm going to get into. But uh, she finds out that she's pregnant, and she's going to have the child. But the, but the husband slips in the part where you know he wouldn't judge her if she wanted to go another direction with the pregnancy <laughs> but she slides in a sideline a woke ass side side piece of dialogue which is funny right, we'll play it should we be having the other discussion <laughs> it's your decision lisa whatever is best for you that's what i want i really appreciate you saying that I thought about it, but I can't. I mean, I'm really grateful that I have that option. But <laughs> right. hold on, because because the the the, oh. the gays in the writer room were like, we have a black chick and she's not getting an abortion. You know what? Now we got a problem, people. Yeah, there's a he black woman and she's not getting an abortion. So what do we do? She needs to acknowledge that abortion is great. She's super great. She's super grateful yeah. for an option she's not going to choose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, when I go in, like, I hate chicken tacos. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. like the carne asada. Yeah. So I go in and I order the carne asada, and then I go, but I'm super grateful that they have yeah, chicken. Yeah. What are you or saying? I go, fuck those people and this chicken. I'm, I want my steak. That's she's she's not getting the abortion. 
but That's she's so she's grateful. Yeah, she, she didn't say it's a good thing. She's yeah. like, she's super grateful. <laughs> That that's an option that she's not going to use, which those fucking homos had to just wedge right. They had to fucking wedge it in there. It's like, we have a black person, and she's not getting an that abortion. That is so funny, that's bro. That's a problem. That line is so forced. Let's hear it again. It's so, <laughs> it it's so, it, of course, it's for No one would ever say yeah, that in yeah. their bedroom. Their husband <laughs> so would glad. go, do you want an abortion? And I'd go, and he'd go, it's up to you. And I'd go, no, I don't. Thank God I could. I'm so glad we live in a state where we can do that. But would you do that with travel? Like, you flying to Yuma or are you taking the bus? I'm flying. But thank God there's that bus option. Yeah, thank God for Greyhound if yeah. I needed it. So weird. <laughs> I need that. But I can't. I mean, I'm really grateful that I have that option. <laughs> <laughs> you got to run it back with the sound. Oh that is God. so funny, dude. I thought about it, but I can't. I mean, I'm really grateful that I have that option. But... <laughs> no. I, oh, by the way, I, why you know, can't see, you, bitch? I see, I see her, her saying right. that I, I need to say this line, like, while uh, filming. Maybe character. it wasn't even in, this, in the no, script. No, it was in the script, bro. It is, <laughs> every moment of every second on television is micromanaged, dude. It's like very rarely does a, just a Shit. quick little... Oh, I just said a funny improv line. It is like micromanaged to the moment. She said, I thought about it, but I can't. What is, why the word can't? Like, that's a moral mm -hmm. decision. Yeah. You're saying, like, I thought about it, but I figure we make enough money. You're and totally I, I right got, on that. I got the double stroller from when the twins were young, so I could use that. Yeah. Like, she says, I thought about it, but I can't. She didn't say, I thought about it and I don't want to do it, or I thought about it and we're going on a direction. Yeah, she man. goes, I can't. When you say I can't, that's like a moral decision. Right. Like It's like someone handing you a pistol and go, that man killed your sister, now shoot him, and your hands start shaking, and right. you go, I can't. Right. It's not because the gun doesn't work. It's, it's like a moral decision. Right. So she goes, I can't, but I'm so grateful that other people right. can engage in a behavior that yeah. I've deemed immoral. You're now it's totally nice right on that. Yeah. You fucking hacks. That is <laughs> such a right, you fucking yeah. hacks. I agree wholeheartedly. Oh, I can't do it, but I'm glad other people can do it. <laughs> that makes no sense to me Who whatsoever. Yeah. Uh, listen, I can't desecrate a synagogue, but... I'm glad that others have the opportunity. And, and again, what is the demographic for this? I mean, I don't know if 20-year-olds are into sex in the city. That seems to be what they would, if it was a guy, be called boomer, right? So it's like a little older. So those are the chicks that all got abortions, and now they're watching the show by themselves with their cats, right? So they're like, oh, yeah, you got to put that line in, not to piss off all the chicks who got abortions. It's a weird, again, piece of writing where she says, I can't. It is weird, because bro. She's in Manhattan and she's rich. Just say I don't want to. I thought about it. I don't want to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so well, weird. I'm glad I could if I and wanted the dudes, to. The dude's got to bring it up first. Yeah, the dude's got to say, "Hey, we can kill the baby if you want." Well, now I got a scene with the dude that's equally as woke, maybe more, more woke. I don't know. All right, let me set the table. Good show. <laughs> I'm hooked, by the way. I'm watching this. You gotta watch hooked. this show. It's awesome. My only problem is, is I'm watching a show. It's 11:30 at night, and I hear this piece of shitty dialogue, and I gotta get out of Would bed you with say my you, underwear and go write it down somewhere. Do, uh, do you hate watch it, or do you watch it because you like it? I I love and hate watch everything simultaneously. Respect. <laughs> I, mean, Respect. I, I wake Respect. up on the North Shore. I grab a cup of coffee. I stand in my complimentary bath, bathrobe and I stare out at the beautiful azure seas of the Pacific in the best mood ever. And then I look down and I see the yoga people and the guy in the tractor mower. And I go, fuck, now I'm pissed. So I'm simultaneously loving life and angry Respect. at the same time. Respect. I would have loved it if... Uh, John Corbin's son got drunk and jumped on that tractor and plowed through all those yoga people at the resort. That's that would have been my world's that coming would have been great. coming together. All right. So, this actor, uh, by the way, that actress is 52 who got pregnant, who can't have the abortion. That's but, but Janet is, Jackson. Bro. Is, yeah. I love no, the she, word. They use the word can't and grateful. Yeah. Was there anything you're grateful for that you can't morally do? You used to be grateful for having a child. 
All right. Yeah. Like, I can't drink passion fruit iced tea, but I'm grateful. No, you're totally exists, right. You know? I it's mean, like, why can't and graceful? Those two words shouldn't have been that close to each other. I, if you're lactose intolerant and you can't drink milk anymore, you can at least be grateful that it milk. exists. For it, other you know they were writing this and they're like, mm, does this make any sense? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, it's perfect. Put it in. Plus, they had to be like a script su- supervisor's piss. Like, hey, Rob, you wrote a script where a black woman wasn't getting an abortion. Yeah, I right. got my highlighter right, out and right. I circled that. We got to fix this now. All right. So, same affluent black couple. This is an affluent black couple living in Manhattan. And it was probably a twelve million dollar apartment. Yeah, I mean, look this, at this this is to the nines, and should have a doorman. By the way, this guy is dressed in a three thousand dollar suit, and when you see this guy, he does not come across as a black man. Okay, he's he's uh, he's a little huskier. His head is shaved, and he's very light skin. And if somebody said he was Armenian, or somebody said people. he was anything. You would have you would have bought it. He looks Syrian more right. than he looks black. Ethnically but, ambiguous. But the point is, is he's with his two daughters who are dressed like to the nines for the Easter Sunday in their beautiful little gowns, and they're seven, eight years old. And then he's wearing a three thousand dollars suit with a pocket square oh. and a Rolex. And in in the in the middle of the day, in the middle of Manhattan in two thousand twenty three, he's going to step out in in front of the most expensive real estate in the world. An attempt to hail a cab. All right, here it is. Hurry, Daddy, get a cab. We don't want to miss the waltz. Okay. Taxi! I wish we were going to hip hop class. <laughs> a white kid oh, and black Daddy, guy. Daddy, here comes one. Daddy, yep. who who's Aren't looks they like. Stop yeah, if go. their light is on. We'll get one, baby. It's okay. Taxi! Yo! Uh, he doesn't look this black. This never happens when we're with Claire's daddy. Uh oh. Ah, here we Uh-oh. go. Uh-oh. Ladies, meet me on the corner, okay? Cab won't stop That's for him because he's black, sir. In the middle of the day, you don't know that yet, right? Excuse me, sir. Oh. You want a white cab white driver. driver? Not even acknowledging him, sir. This is illegal, so unlock the door or I'll report you. Hey, hello. Yeah, you better go. Is that your all right, hurt? the guy had a certainly. All right, th- this this non-black man had a pink pocket square and was with his two daughters in the middle of the day in the middle of Manhattan in front of most expensive real estate in Manhattan and then they found the one white cab driver in yeah. all of Manhattan yeah, yeah. which is I love how they write they're like oh we gotta do a scene where the cab is 2023 totally right, and they go we gotta but how's this gonna work if the cab driver if the cab driver's Middle Eastern or Indian or yep. black, then narrative Doesn't fuck. Bro. Yeah. Fuck our own narrative. So we need a white cab driver yep. in 2020. Yep. When's the last time we had a white cab driver in Manhattan? Never is the answer. So, so we got the white guy and we got the we got the white guy who doesn't exist. Right. We got the black guy who doesn't read black. When you're driving down the the, the how it goes is it's the Folks from other countries who've come here to drive cabs who've been tuned up on black dudes in bad neighborhoods and crime and statistics. 100%. They've been tuned up. That's why they don't do it. They'll pick up black women, but they're not going to pick up black guys. But that's about the time. That's about the neighborhood. That's about, is it dark outside? What side of the tracks are we on? How's the guy dressed? He's with his fucking daughters dressed in a three thousand dollar suit with a yeah. pink pocket square outside is super expensive. And they place. get the one white guy. This is why I could never, I, I could never write. Can on I any tell of these you shows. one of my? I, it's uh, fucking insane. But by the way, it's mostly insulting. Yeah, is it, it is. mostly insulting? Yes. That this is this is what they think. This is where this is what they think. Of, by, by the way, this is not Arkansas, Manhattan, two thousand twenty. Yeah. Yeah. This yeah. is where we're at. Big yeah. problem. So, so yeah, and it's a power dynamic. It's it's like why like all these super rich, uh, you know, black Hollywood loves to act like they're just as pr- oppressed as everybody else. Why they're cash and checks and living in nice sections of L.A. The best example of this is like I I love the show on Apple TV called Hijack. Did anyone see that? Oh, they just sell them. Oh, it's yeah. so hilarious. The premise of the show is a flight from the Middle East gets hijacked by white terrorists. <laughs> I love it. 
<laughs> white people hijack the the Middle Eastern. Fl- I mean, it's the most. It's a great show, but it's so woke. It's hilarious. It's the baddest person on the plane, the person who does all the killing, a white woman. Right? It's like it's it's the most hilarious thing. And you, the show's so good. You want to be like, okay, just let it go. Just let it go. <laughs> just let it go. Well, I can't let shit go. I got to stop every 10 seconds and go, what the fuck are these people doing? I'm with you. It's subtle. They slide it in. It's almost subliminal now, but it's you. It's them trying to make you think we live in a much more racist society than we live. I in. totally That's agree. Exactly with what you. it is. And abortion is a good thing. At least you can watch it in a healthy way and make fun of it if i was forced to watch this i would be the angriest person on earth (laughs) well i can't i have to i have to keep running for my notepad and writing shit down but it also lets you know like why our political process is kind of effed because the people who watch this like not hate watch it but watch because they love it are like older liberal women who believe that a guy can walk out of the most expensive property in manhattan in the most expensive suit and not get a taxi that was and a he would sweet suit too and he wouldn't do uber is that what you're telling me that this super rich guy wouldn't get an uber for him and his daughters to go to hip-hop class this dress like they this rich black dude would have told his white doorman to go get him a fucking cap yeah that's how this would have worked yeah all right one or two news stories. Sorry, I got a, I got sidetracked with it's that okay. show. It's okay, as you should have. Um, so last week there's a, a Democratic candidate for the Virginia House of Delegates mm-hmm. who denounced an illegal invasion of her privacy after video surfaced showing that she and her husband uh, used to perform sex sex acts live on on live video on this site called Chatterbait. So her name's Susanna Gibson, and so she calls this the worst gutter politics. Of of um, these videos being reported and an illegal invasion of her privacy designed to humiliate her and her family, so the Washington Post first reported it. These are undated pornographic videos of her and her husband. Just uh, what they would do is they go on the site called Chatterbait. People would donate like tokens or money, and then they would perform sex acts. I've heard of this nation. website. <laughs> yeah, sure. Sam Sam has has heard of it. Do you, at least. you have? Yes. How? It, okay. Well, first off, a distinction. You know, Pam and Tommy Lee were doing a remod in Malibu that put their gun safe in the garage and some guy stole the yeah, safe. Yeah, 100% That's just different. stealing your shit. Yes. It's a, it, yeah. it, that is a private moment right, right for privacy. But there's other versions where you put stuff up for consumption. That's this is completely not a private- legal. Yeah, uh, yeah, and viewer, they they just watch live webcam performances as the viewers, and yeah, there's nudity, sex, and yeah, she was she was a professional finger blaster. That's what she was, <laughs> and like you can't call it dirty politics because your history is a part of it. You, you know should have known that this is going to come up. Well, but I mean, how so- far before was she in involved with her political career? No, I mean this is a, like she's a nurse practitioner with two kids. Okay, and so. She- so we go, um, but also you have to go like, if you were like, you go, um, oh, I'm thinking about running for district selectman. Then you have to go, oh, remember eight years ago I was on fingerblasters.com? Yeah. Uh, maybe not such a great idea. Yeah. 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 100. And this is what women don't understand and why, like when we go, hey man, Listen, you want to be a whore? I'm not going to complain. I love whores. But maybe (laughs) stop snitching on your snatch and stop telling everybody that. Your history is a part of your journey. And like the whole thing with Logan Paul and his his, uh, fiance and like, all the time she's been super sexual. It's like, yeah, that, you can't just say that doesn't matter or that isn't important. That's every guy. Like when I do stand up on stage, I've talked about some pretty gnarly shit. I can't act like when I get off stage, that energy isn't a part of who I am. And that's a big thing that women want to do. They want to do whatever they want with no consequences. That's yeah. it. Um, this is the consequences of finger blasting yourself on camera for money. Well, also. <laughs> You make yourself, everyone, it's not the whole victim mentality. Everyone just makes themselves into a victim. But, well, she's not. She's saying this will not intimidate me and it won't silence me. Oh, but she claims that she was, This is know, dirty politics. Dirty. There's nothing dirty about it. Well, okay. Now, let's just think about it for a second. 
So you get on these websites and then you can give them some tokens and get the husband to do stuff to the wife and the wife to do yeah, stuff yeah. They for the husband. Yeah, they basically just perform for like tips. Like okay, they're, they're so here, would be my, here would be my approach to this if I was on this website. Because I'd be like, I can watch people fuck for free all day long on the internet. I can go to you porn or you jizz or you cum or you something and I'm yeah. just uh, I don't need yeah. it. And by the way, they're no offense, but they're they're hotter than you, and I can watch them <laughs> fuck. But I would like to watch you make him an omelet. That like, would I'm, be I'm hilarious. old fashioned. You know what I mean? Like I forget about all the scenarios of the pizza man or the cuckolding or anything like that. I just want a scenario where like he wakes up in the morning and goes, man, I got to get to work. And then you go, not before I get you that Denver omelet, hun. Yeah. And then you just run and start rattling those pots and pans. I'll come in a second. Conservative pornography. That yes. is a genre that needs to be developed. Yeah. And then before he leaves for work, you'll be like, all right, hun, I'll have a meatloaf waiting for you when you come home. I'm going to pick up the dry cleaning and I'm going to have your golf cleats repaired. Yeah. And then he leaves. Yeah. Yeah, I'm in, oh, dude. Oh, and then he stops, and you come running out with a travel mug with coffee in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would come so fast. And by the way, if she did do that, she would win the election. Everybody right. on both sides would vote mm -hmm. for her. The liberals, because she did porn, and that's some mm. kind of feminism. And the conservatives, because she's a conservative porn star. Mm, yeah. So now, first off, why? I, how, I never get, where's the husband come in on this stuff? You know what I mean? Like, why would he agree to this? But okay. All right. You've left a, a lovely legacy for your kids. <laughs> it's so weird because if you look at them, you go, guess what they do? Pornography is not what I guess when I look at that. Right? Right. You know what? Let me. All right. I got a theory. My theory is, you know, all the fire and brimstone preachers are always talking about a man laying down with another man. They're always the ones doing the foot tap yeah, at the airport, yeah. right? They're always the gay ones, <laughs> yeah, right? for sure. Right. And then all the people that act nice are super mean. You know, Ellen's dancing and talking about being good humans and stuff and then screaming You're at totally everyone, right? right? Like they, oh, they all do that. And is I believe almost... Everything you put out there is a unconscious or even conscious attempt to protect something that is different inside you. So all the badass guys with the tattoos and the mohawks, they're, they're scared guys. The yeah. real badasses don't have the haircuts. They just, they are badass, but they don't dress it. No, I you, get you know that. what I mean? They don't talk it, you know? I wonder if the people that feel like dirty and naughty and slutty inside push out this wholesome thing like i always say i can act like an asshole because i'm not an asshole i don't i don't have a facade of being nice because I, I don't feel guilty about not being nice i'm not trying to convince people of any of anything no i get that so I, agree. I, I wonder if the people whether it's the preacher or it's a squeaky clean golf couple if they're really feeling weird and nasty in the bedroom if they push like wear more pastels and yeah. don't grow a beard you, you know what i mean right, right i think that's what we're looking at i t completely 100 percent agree they you know you think they live in this kind of prim and proper world but really behind closed doors they're all s just psychopath how savages does the, how does the pitch work with the with the site you know what i mean like who's bringing it up you know what i mean like am i a guy and i'm saying to my nurse wife you know, you ever see these websites where there's like <laughs> naked people on it? And she'd be like, yeah, porn. Yeah, sure. I'm right. No. The, and I, then you're like, you know, there are these other ones that are like more involved. Yeah. You know? And then she's like, more involved. Hmm. Well, what does that mean? And like, eventually you got to get to the point where it's like, I want to film us fucking. And I went, I went out of work truckers giving us a nickel 100%. to do it to 69. Like, how do you pitch that? Men always get called narcissists, but I don't think there's any bigger narcissist than an adult film star. Mm. Right? Like, there's nobody more like, I, you should pay me just to be naked. That's the most narcissistic thing ever. Yeah. And, and, and it's kind of hilarious because you got this whole thing that, like, think about what feminists are telling everybody. It's like... Doing OnlyFans is the greatest form of, of feminist empowerment. It, but in the past, it was like the lowest form, right? It's like, dude, if you did this, you were out of options. Well, let's let's break it down into a less technical 
like digital standpoint. Okay. Like if, if, would you look at this as empowered? Like if you're a woman, like I know they go OnlyFans, you're empowered, you know, you're yeah, independent, yeah, yeah. you're empowered. All right, but let's just say this is pre digital age. Let's just say there's another woman, and this is 40 years ago, and her deal was she would go down the subway and charge everyone 50 cents to look at her tits. Yeah. Would you say that's an empowered woman? No. <laughs> All right. Well, then what are we talking about here? 100%. <laughs> it goes back to my old theory that like they're just trying to make outlaw shit mainstream and not everybody's built for the outlaw lifestyle. People who did porn back in the day was because they were out of options. They had a lot of trauma and they couldn't function in an office setting. So they had to figure out some way to make a lot of money quickly. Now they're trying to make... Make like the average person who just doesn't want to work into like a porn and everyone's a star too you're like you're not just someone who fucks on camera you are a star you're a porn star and now yeah. you find out you're really just a lonely person at this point well you know what's weird those same people they love an entrepreneur as long as you have no fucking employees once you start employing people, then you become a business. You're still an entrepreneur, and then they hate your guts. Yes. It's mm -hmm. kind of interesting. But if you're an individual entrepreneur and you pay for no one else's health insurance or dental, then you're a hero. All right. We need to uh, break here. Greg Harden, who's a peak performance coach, worked with Tom Brady and many, many other notables. And it's going to be a weirder conversation. It's going to be a different <laughs> a conversation. 180. Sorry if I swore too much. I feel I, bad. I got a no, few more like and just like that clips to play for Greg. <laughs> Sam Tripoli, Broken Simulation and Conspiracy Social Club, a.k.a. Deep Waters, is uh, the name of the pod. And live dates, samtripoli.com is where I go. We'll talk to performance coach Greg Harden right after this. Well, good news. It's O Rewards Member Appreciation Month at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Get the most out of your membership. Shop, earn points, and get rewards sent right to your phone or email. If you're not an O Rewards member yet, sign up. It's quick and it's easy. You can do it online or in the store if you like. Just ask one of their professional parts people about joining O Rewards next time you visit, and you can start earning points on your first purchase. Sign up for both email and text and get even more out of your membership. And right now, members receive two times, three times, up to eight times O Rewards points on select purchases. Those bonus points can help you get to your next reward even faster. You receive a $5 reward for every 150 O Rewards points, and you can use your reward on your next in-store or online purchase. So don't miss O Rewards Member Appreciation Month now at your local O'Reilly Auto Parts store and O'ReillyAuto.com. Greg Harden here, peak performance coach. Stay sane in an insane world. How to control the controllables and thrive wherever you find better books. Debuted number one on Amazon, New York Times bestseller. As well, worked with many, many... The foreword written by Tom Brady. Uh, work with many notable athletes. Good to see you. Good to be seen. Uh, so what do you... I have a theory with Tom Brady, but you tell me. And I base this on some guys I went to high school with. Um, the best athletes, it comes easily for, oftentimes, especially at the high school level, into college. Guy, yes. guy like Johnny Manziel. That mm. guy was just a great athlete. He'd just run everywhere. And he yes. just sort of got by on that he could get by on it like a beautiful woman got by on her looks mm -hmm. but they don't develop the study habits you know whereas a guy like brady had to study had to work at it harder than some of the guys that came a little more naturally or may have had some more physical gifts well you know you're right you know Ooh. you're absolutely right I'll think about that. it <laughs> tom brady is not going to out jump you he's not going to out lift you he probably is not going to outrun you but you still can't catch him. <laughs> right. Think about it. Think about what it really means to be a guy who you can measure how much weight he can lift, all of that, but you can't measure this, his mind, and you can't measure his heart. So he trained incessantly to be an expert on how to play the game. He's a student of the game because athletically he may have been suspect. <laughs> yeah, and I would argue that 
one kind of creates the other. Like if you're Mike Vick, what is your motivation to really mm. study mm. when you just have that kind of ability? Yes, and you saw him transform himself, and his mind game improved dramatically because he had a new vision. The vision wasn't just to be, I'm that guy. The vision was to be the best. To be the best, you've got to operate at more than one level. You've got to have the ability to train your mind and train your spirit. <laughs> well, what's the biggest problem people have with the mind training? Like, I find way too much externalizing, way too much blaming everything outside of their control, in which case, how can you control it? You've just externalized everything. I, I talk not, not about sports, but just in general. I talk to people all the time that are just constantly, you know, the Uber guy was five minutes late. That's why we missed the flight. It's like, yeah, but you should have left a half hour earlier. Mm -hmm. Like there's so much externalizing and it, it's, it is no road to any sort of repair because it's somebody else's fault all the time. What we identify in this book is helping people see how to identify and eliminate self-defeating attitudes, the ways that I think, and behaviors, the ways that I act. What we teach people is to become the world's greatest expert on one subject, themselves. People study everything except themselves. Right. People are so preoccupied with and being overwhelmed by fear and self-doubt that they miss the opportunity to seize control over what they can control. And how I feel about me has to be something that is under my control, not yours, not anybody else's. And so teaching people to be that sophisticated and to be able to stop being preoccupied with what somebody else is doing, I mean, blaming others, uh, uh, making excuses, uh, always desperately seeking someone else's approval, that sabotages who I want to become and how I can be the best version of myself, a phrase we all hear and talk about repeatedly. I think your phone, I think, I think Tom's calling you. <laughs> this, uh, I always hear about Brady's uh, kind of crazy nutritional stuff, but all I hear about is avocados and not eating tomatoes and stuff like that. <laughs> we'll figure it out. Oh, we'll figure it out. Do you, what, how... Can you speak to the diet part? Well, you've got to understand that uh, he is so different. Unlike many of his uh, colleagues and competitors, he's not trying to bulk up. He's trying to become more flexible. And that's, I mean, and of course he's retired. <laughs> but what we're talking about is a guy who understood that his body type, getting diesel, is not what he needed to do. He needed to figure out ways to train himself to eat a certain way, to increase his flexibility, to increase his endurance, to stack the deck in terms of his idea of what fitness means. And being fit for him is very different than many of his contemporaries. Yeah, so you, when you, like compared to Tom Brady, you also helped but trained Michael Phelps. So when you see Michael Phelps, I mean, like there's those famous pictures of Tom Brady before he became Tom Brady, right? He's scrawny in his underwear. He was a backup quarterback at University of Michigan. But then Michael Phelps is a phenom. He was like the youngest, like Olympian swimmer. Uh, and he was already great. So what, when you approach Michael Phelps, what do you, what do you have to say to him? I have the unmitigated gall to look at Michael Phelps and says, and say, we still haven't seen you at your best. <laughs> Michael looks at me like I've lost my mind, right? Because he's already got eight gold medals, etc. And trying to convince a guy, I mean, Adam opened up the door to bringing up Michael Vick. Adam opened up the door talking about how do you get people who were up on, in high school, they were phenomenal. How do you get them to see that there's more? Because you teach them to understand that there are three levels of fitness. Physical fitness, maybe natural. Mental fitness and spiritual fitness opens up a door to be, go to the whole nother level. We're talking about peak performance. We're not talking about performance. We're talking about being the absolute best that you can be. So if you're serious about going to the next level, Michael, <laughs> you've got to get your mind right. 
You got to get over some of your issues. You got to let go of yesterday's baggage. And so all of a sudden you're talking to a, a guy like Michael Phelps about, you know, what kind of baggage you dra- are dragging around that interferes with your ability to not just rebel against your coach, to fight with your coach. I mean, think, think for a moment. He's been training for the Olympics since he's 12 years old. Has he had a childhood? Nah, bro. <laughs> Every day, all day, back and forth, and <laughs> back and yeah. forth. And when he rebels, he's simply trying to prove that I'm a real human being. He isn't doing anything wrong by being a knucklehead and getting in trouble and being exposed on social media. He's just simply trying to say, am I not a man? Am I not a regular person? And that's what you have to give him a chance to talk about. And anybody else that wants to talk. You know, I've oftentimes cited swimmers because everything is so repetitive. I mean, the worst, the thing that's difficult about training is repetition. If somebody says, go do one squat, and you go, fine. If someone goes, do 100 squats, you go, I'm out, yes. right? So what's bad, a squat? Well, it's how many times? It's how many times with, with everything. Everyone can go walk a few miles, but they, can't, they don't want to walk 30 miles, you know? So, and that's the part where your mind starts to really creep in, the, the, the serious repetition stuff. All swimming is his repetitions, it's back and forth. And as, rep, as repetitive as football and every other sport is, you have teammates, there's interactions, your head's not underwater, <laughs> just staring at tile. You're just right. counting grout lines back and <laughs> forth for hours and hours a day. And it kind of it, it's it's kind of interesting. I was in I was in Maui. I don't know why. This reminds me of Phelps. And uh, we're going on a kayak thing. And the guy was doing the tour, he points at a bird. And he goes, That bird flies three thousand miles to Alaska nonstop. And I go, Wow. And then he goes, there's a part of the brain, the bird has a part of its brain it can shut off where it's just flapping for 3,000 miles, not thinking for 3,000 miles, can literally shut a part of its brain off <laughs> because how else could you do this Without motion crazy, for, yeah. for you know 48 hours or 72 hours straight or whatever it took or months? But I thought there must be a part of Michael Phelps are all these super endurance athletes that must be able to shut their brain off to just do 5,000 laps in a swimming pool every morning at 6 a.m. And then you go out and you interact with the public. How do you turn your brain? How do you turn that brain back on? (laughs) AC, your stock just went up with me. I'm (laughs) telling you. I mean, that's a classic example. I use that example. What? What? I'm serious. Think about what it really means to be a swimmer. I mean, the only the closest thing we have is track and field. Mm-hmm. But they're outdoors. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, it's, and the scene changes. Right, the, <laughs> the scenery. The swimmer right. is nonstop. There was a white, talk about white line fever. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing but white lines and back and forth. You talk about, inter- you talk about internal dialogue. Right, yeah. <laughs> And you can't even wear earbuds, right? Well, some have to because <laughs> the way that the water affects them. But that's like earplugs, There right? you go. But but they can't listen to a they, podcast. They can't party. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Imagine. And so you talk about some of the best trained mental athletes, and they're nutty as fruitcakes. <laughs> because, I mean, think about it. They're in their head, and they have a heart that you can't even measure. But think about what he said. They have a space in their brain that says, I have to shut this down and focus like a laser beam on the task at hand and give 100%, 100% of the time over and over and over and over and over and over. It takes a special individual to pull that off. Right. Yeah, but you wonder if there's a little serial killer in it. Like most people can't pull that off either. I'm not comparing Phelps to a serial killer, but I'm saying <laughs> wow. your brain has to be different than most it, brains. I, I agree with you wholeheartedly. It cannot be wired like our, our brains who needs social interaction. And they, he's in the pool for hours, right? Yes. And talk about social interaction. It's a tad bit awkward. <laughs> he struggles mightily with what, what we're talking about right now. 
I mean, it comes to being a soldier, he's great. But now you want me to be on stage and you want me to give speeches and you want me to, you know, uh, he has to now train his brain once again to allow him the freedom. I mean, he is a spokesperson for mental health and he's doing an amazing job. He does not want to be a spokesperson for anything but his heart and his mind combined and created for him uh, the sort of energy and the sort of ability to push himself out of his comfort zone because he felt that strongly about pushing the issues of mental health. Uh, I got questions. Uh, I'll give you an example of something I've brought up a few times in terms of potential physical versus the mental part of the game. It's the, I call it the tale of two Jerry's. There's Jerry Rice and there's Jerry Porter. Jerry Porter was a very gifted wide receiver in the NFL, played for the Raiders for a number of years. I don't know if he went anywhere else after the Raiders, but he was gifted physically, big and strong. I played, I didn't play with him. I did some weird bit scrimmage with him or something, but he was a uniquely gifted athlete. I saw he's big in size. Yes. He could run. Yes. And he was strong. And he could do a thing that I'd never seen happen until the Jets game where the guy scored the touchdown and got up without putting his hands down. He'd get up from his back, full full gear, full gear, holding the ball in his chest, sling both feet behind him. Mm. I don't know how to say it, by his hips, and pop up. He wouldn't roll up. He wouldn't uh, get up. It would be like me saying, lay on the ground. And get up. Put put, put <laughs> shoulder pads and a helmet on, too, by right. the way. Lay on the ground. And by the way, in the fourth quarter, lay in the grass. Put your hands on your chest. Yeah, you're out of breath. No you're rocking. Tired. No rocking. Just get up. <laughs> just get up. Just, just put your feet behind you. Just sling your feet next to you and just stand. <laughs> rise up. You're 230 pounds. He could do that. He was gifted, but he didn't. Oh, I think we have we have him doing it against Denver in the snow. Oh! Yeah. Now, when people do shit just like gymnasts, when they make it look easy, go lay on the ground and try it. <laughs> Show it to me one more time. Lay on the ground and try to pop up in the snow with helmet and shoulder pads on after just running a thirty yard <laughs> sprint, and you just pop up because that's what he did. Because he was crazy. Physically, I trained with him at the Oakland Raiders training camp. He rolled out to the right. He played quarterback in high school. He threw a frozen rope about 40 yards down the field with his right hand. Then he got the ball again, rolled out to the left, threw a frozen rope 40 yards with his left hand. Jeez. Explain to me, he broke his arm in high school, had to play left-handed his senior year. <laughs> okay, gifted, but not a Hall of Famer. And no one most people even have heard of. Tell the two Jerry. Right. But then there was Jerry Rice. Did not have that speed. Didn't have the size. Couldn't get up without using his hands. Couldn't throw a laser with his left hand. But he worked. Worked very, very hard. And with that work, he's now the GOAT in the Hall of Fame. And the other Jerry you haven't heard of. Mm -hmm. But that was all work ethic. Yeah. And it was all mind control. Can, I mean, have you ever seen the Jerry Rice workout? Gentlemen, you've got to look up Jerry Rice's off-season workout. It's sick. <laughs> it's twisted. What is it? He, he he would run up and down mountains. Yeah. I he mean, was like the Walter Payton mountain he, runner. Oh, he loved it. He would out-train and out-work, and he would push himself more than anyone you'd ever seen push themselves. So – he was a very gifted athlete, but mentally he was stronger than the, anyone that you can think about when it comes to that position and that role. So that's a great uh, little story, story of two Jerry's. Yeah. I get it. What are, what are some <clears throat> mental exercises people can do to strengthen their, their mind control? Um, it's really important that you teach people how to understand the, the un, un, one of the popular terminologies now is mindfulness. You understand? Mindfulness is trying to get people to surrender and allow themselves to stop living in the past 
and stop being obsessed over the future, to live in the here and now. And how do you teach people that? One formula, uh, formula of course, is to understand that breathing should not be underrated. <laughs> Breathing techniques is what we will introduce to anyone that's committed to having the mental discipline that we're encouraging people to consider. Imagine this. If I tell you I need you to take five deep breaths from the bottom of your stomach all the way to the top of your chest, hold for four seconds, and then exhale. It sounds simple, but it's not easy. And what's really exciting about it is that I'm asking you to understand that in order to control your breathing— You have to control your mind. In order to control your mind, you have to control your thoughts. (laughs) So we teach people simple things like that uh, to encourage them to practice, train, and rehearse mind control. Because we're looking to talk about self-mastery, self-discipline, self-motivation. You've got to teach people to be self-motivated. Because there are some people who are really talented athletes who, unless somebody is in their butt all day, all night, they're not going to do what it takes to go to the next level. How do I become more self-motivated, self-disciplined, and pursue self-mastery? My increased understanding of who I am to be able to do self-assessment, self-evaluation, and increase my self-awareness. So all those things lend itself to becoming a peak performer. Because remember, the ultimate quest is to teach you to be the world's greatest expert on one subject, you. (laughs) Did So now you tell me what you think of this, but I sort of believe part of it is discipline and, you know, and self, you know, being conscious of things and stuff. But... You also have to kind of know yourself and maybe play tricks on yourself sometimes. For instance, I walked in here once and um, I opened the fridge and I saw a set of keys sitting in the fridge. And I said, well, who the hell put their keys in the refrigerator? What kind of absent-minded person would leave their car keys in the refrigerator? And that was Dr. Drew because he didn't want to forget medication that needed to be refrigerated for a patient. Hmm. So he put his car keys on there so he wouldn't leave without them. And I thought, oh, you know yourself. You know you're going to leave after this podcast and get in the car. You're going to get down to the whatever, and you're going to go, oh, the vaccine Bridge. that needs to be refrigerated is back in the shop. You know, So it's an example. It's pretty concrete. But it's a kind of a know yourself, know your weaknesses, know your, your foibles kind of a, approach to life. And like for me... I consider myself a lazy person. I always thought of myself as a lazy person. So I usually pack my schedule with things that I have to do Mm -hmm. that I can't get out of because I can't be a lazy person if you put all these dates on the calendar with travel and so on and so forth. So it's like kind of know who you are, be realistic, and then come up, you know, if, if you tend to eat crappy cereal at two in the morning while you're watching TV, don't buy the, don't have it in the house. Because if it's in the house, you'll get to it at some point. Like there's an element of, you know, being conscious of things. And there's a thoughtful, mindful version of this. And there's also training a dog version of it, which is just don't hang out with these people. Don't, you know, you like to drink at night. Don't drink at night. You always end up eating the crappy cereal after you drink. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like kind of know yourself. But you, you, you know, of course, you're nailing it. And remember... I just got through talking about becoming the world's greatest expert on you. Jerry Port. Oh, oh me. Yeah. You understand? Mm-hmm. And so how do we get there? Well, in the book, we provide you with absolute concrete examples and tools to – you've been around enough, and you've seen SWOT analysis mm-hmm. taught by the business school. And we're going to your organization, and we're going to look at the strengths, the weaknesses – the opportunities and threats to success that is represented by the company. We have 200 employees. Today, we have 50 of you in this room. You're going to break into small groups. But first, before you go into a small group, you're going to identify strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats to the company. And then you're going to get in a small group, and you're going to uh, compare and contrast and come up with your own list that you share. And then you're going to come back, and each one of you are going to put on, on, on board your SWOT analysis. 
I have the unmitigated gall <laughs> to do SWOT analysis on people, mm. to teach you to be so critically conscious of what's working in your life and what's not working. Now, here's another tool for you to begin to examine, what do I do well? What is it that I'm suspect at? And what are the opportunities that I, I need to look at? And what are threats to me becoming the person I dream of becoming? What is your dream? What is your defi- self-definition of success? What are the threats to that happening? So I teach you to do a SWOT analysis on yourself, and we come back and we'll look at what, what you can see. Then I have the nerve to suggest I need you to identify two or three people who you love and trust who won't abuse any power you might give them and have them do a SWOT analysis on your ass. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) The greatest story in the story in the book that's going to flip you out, I had a young man named Miles Miller, and he's he's comfortable because it's in the book. I I said, Miles, I need you to identify two or three people. This boy went and chose his ex-boss who fired him and his (laughs) ex-girlfriend. (laughs) <laughs> I'll be honest. Him. Sure. This is about to say, boy, you crazy. <laughs> you have lost your mind. He says, well, you know, I trust them. I said, okay, well, let's see what happens. It was brilliant. He came back with uh, his list and their list. And we began to compare and contrast what's congruent and what they saw in, in terms of your strengths and your weaknesses, opportunities and threats, and what are blind spots that you never saw that they could see. And you, could be, you can see in this whole program, in this whole model, an opportunity to create personalized, individualized goals. What is it I need to work on? So that's how we teach people to get to the point where they can become the world's greatest expert and know yourself. You've got to know yourself better than anybody else. You've got people in your life who can tell you what you need to stop doing, what you need to start doing. And guess what? We all have people like that, right? Mm-hmm. We didn't make no, any changes until we decided. You won't change anything in your life until you decide. Here's the beauty. There are some amazing creatures on this planet. <laughs> You've seen what I'm talking about. But there's only one creature that has the ability to decide I'm not going to be the same today as I was yesterday, a human being. Human beings are the only dog going to be a dog every day. Right. (laughs) Lion going to be a lion. Right. But a human being can look in the mirror and see what they like and they can take it to another level and they can see what they don't like and decide to change. A powerful note to go out on the book, Stay Sane in an Insane World, How to Control the Controllables and Thrive, wherever you find finer books. Website, greghardon.com is where you can go. Yes, I agree. How can you not? Yeah. Words of wisdom, Greg. Thank you very much for sharing them with us. Thank you for the opportunity. (laughs) I love when people say opportunity. (laughs) <laughs> I do because I, I I would talk to people and they'd go like, oh, I got to get a new thing because I got to get dressed because I got I to gotta go to the Oscar party. And I'd go, you got to go to the Oscar party you or you go. get to go to the Oscar party? Like, just start rephrasing stuff, people. Cool. You get, you know, people, I do my business. I got to go to Vegas. I got to go do two comedy shows. Like, you get to go to Vegas and you get to do shows. Bless your heart. Bless my heart. Sam Tripoli as well. Live dates everywhere. You can go to samtripoli.com. And until next time, Sam Crawford, Greg Harden, and Sam Tripoli, and Chris Max Best saying, Mahalo.